When we talk about acoustic guitar necks, there's usually two methods or techniques that are discussed, sometimes debated. One is the single piece neck, the other is the scarfed joint neck. The guys over at Project Guitar have a great article uh, called Guitar Anatomy Basics that goes over all of the scarfed joint versions. They've got some great examples there that you can read through. We'll leave some links down below. There's also a great article from The Scientific Guitarist which talks about why Gibson headstocks have a tendency to break. They go over all of the physics of the neck, including some things like the increased neck angle of Gibson's headstock and a larger pocket size for the truss rod. Now, that's a lot of great info, but there's been a lot of guitars that have been built with both of these methods. So if we set aside the science for a minute, what are the practical implications of both of those build methods? I think there's two things that we're interested in. Number one would be the long-term durability of that neck joint, but also the deflection or how much flexibility is introduced in the headstock. Now, what if we could test the differences between both methods? What if we could see in real life the difference in the stresses that are introduced and how the neck responds. Now to do that, I think we'd need to build two identical necks, both using each of those build methods. So one would be a single piece neck, the other one would be a scarf jointed neck. They would have to be built to exact specifications. So I think we need to see and see both of those necks to ensure that we got the same cut, shaping, sizing, and tolerances on both of those necks. I think we'd also have to make sure that they came from the same block of wood. That way we take out all of the variables of different trees uh, and variations in the wood. We would get as close to cutting both of those pieces out of the same area of even that block of wood. Okay, well, to do that, first, we gotta order some wood. When we're talking about scarfed versus single piece necks, it's all about the long grain versus the short grain. You can see it here in this neck that we put together. This is one of our typical necks that is scarf jointed. You'll see the grain run long ways through the main portion of the neck, and then the headstock has been tipped back, and you'll see then all of this is long grain as well. So you have the most stable portions of the grain running in both the headstock and throughout the neck. Now when we talk about a one-piece neck, we're talking about cutting it out of a block just like this, all with one pass of a cut. The challenge is, is that this is where we introduce short grain. You have long grain running through what would be the main portion of the neck here, and as you make the cut into the headstock down this direction, now you've introduced short grain because the grain of the wood continues to run out in this direction. We think at that point, that's where you're introducing the most amount of flexibility or deflection uh, that can happen in the headstock. Like we talked about before, in order for this to be a good test, we need to minimize variability. So we're going to cut both of these necks out of the same block. We're gonna do the single piece neck out of the top here, and then we're gonna cut a billet right out of the middle. I'm gonna keep those cuts as close as possible, so let's draw those out on the block. I went ahead and drew the rest of the pieces on here so that you can see how everything's going to land. We've got the main one piece neck up the top and then I've got the billets that will be cut out just down below. 
Now, what's gonna happen is probably when I cut this top piece, I'm gonna end up with a little bit too much wander chatter from the bandsaw blade, and this is probably gonna end up a little too close. So I, I will probably just get this cut out and then we'll cut billets out uh, down below. But mainly what I want you to see here is that all of the joints are gonna land in the same place in this stock of wood. Again, this is all about minimizing variability. We want to be consistent with where we're going to cut this and how those joints are going to come out. So now we should be ready to start cutting. necks are finished, assembled, and ready for final carving. We're going to put a truss rod slot down the front, we're going to turn them over, and we're going to have the CNC machine carve them on the back. Both of these necks are nearly identical, same dimension. In fact, they're so identical, come here, let me show you. Okay, check this out. The one-piece neck, 471 grams. The scarf-jointed neck. 472 grams. I don't think we're gonna get any closer than that. All right, let's go fire up the CNC machine, let it do some cutting. Next are fresh off the machine and they look fantastic. I could not be happier with the way that those turned out. Uh, and I think the only thing left that we need to do is to shape the headstock. So let's do that. So now we're getting to the fun part. We've got to build a testing rig. So here's my thought. We've got a three quarter inch piece of plywood down here as a base. And then I'm thinking about, we just build this tower above here to be able to do all of the pulling and the stress testing. So we'll use this up here like this. Uh, we'll use this, uh, this digital gauge scale and we'll pull at the same angle as the headstock. And then we'll put a turnbuckle at the bottom of this to be able to increase or decrease the pressure on the headstock. And then we'll use a dial indicator uh, down here on a mount that will measure uh, the amount of flexibility that's happening then in the headstock.
progress, but minor setback. I realized that I had put the neck down flat onto the base and was planning on pulling up on the headstock. Well, the problem is, is that that's pulling backwards on the headstock. That's not what we want to test. We're testing the string pressure uh, that would be applied to the headstock. So I need to flip the neck over, which means it's got to sit like this. So in order to make that work, I built these kind of stop blocks or, or height blocks that we can put in here uh, to support. Put these in here like this. We'll be able to clamp down onto the top of these and now we can pull the headstock in uh, the natural direction for the stress testing. So we're still on track, just a minor setback. Now I told you guys that this was going to be the first in a two-part series. I wanted you to see all of that behind the scenes on how the necks were put together. I don't want you to have any question about the baseline of the testing. I want you to be able to rely on these results. So now we've got two necks ready to go. We've got the testing jig ready to go. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. We've got two support blocks that are gonna hold everything very, very stable. We've got our dial indicator that's gonna measure the deflection, and we've got our crane scale with a turn buckle that's gonna allow us to dial in all of that pressure onto the headstock at a micro level. Now, I want you guys to join us for that next episode because that's where all the numbers are gonna fly. We're gonna have spreadsheets, we're gonna get all of that in there, we'll do graphs to show you all of the measurements as we do that testing. I haven't actually done any of that testing yet, so you're gonna see all of that live with me. Uh, we'll do it all together so that you can see the reactions that I have. I really don't know how it's gonna go either. So excited about all that. Come back for that next episode. Until then, we'll see you all next time.